Coach Snyder, uh, C3 here in Iowa. Uh, driver fly, how'd you get here? Drove. How long? About four and a half hours. So you did you get up like at 5 a.m.? 4.30, got on the road, no problem. You're a road warrior, by the way. Yeah, in Midwest, you gotta be a road warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at this, uh, coming here, being able to recruit, I haven't seen you guys in Georgia yet, but when it comes within striking distance, four or five hour drive, looks like you guys are on board. Uh, what do you think of your session so far? You know, you got to show some technique yeah. and be able to get your hands on some guys, talk to them, and kind of get a feel for the recruiting. Yeah, no, it's great. You know, there's uh, obviously there's some really good wrestling up here in uh, Northern Iowa, and um, you know, every time, anytime we have an opportunity, you know, to be in front of these guys and you know, help out a little bit and uh, get to know them at a better, you know, deeper level, it's always great for us. So I enjoy it, and you know, hopefully they get something out of it as well. This summer is real busy for you guys. I know, obviously, Rio. Yeah. Were you in Rio? Yeah. So you're in Rio, and I'm, Coach Manning was probably in Rio. Yeah. So, like, basically almost your whole staff was in Rio. Yeah. Um, you guys are in Rio. Tough Olympics, obviously. Yep. Um, coming off of that, is it, have you guys been getting back to normal more, would you say, as far as Cornhuskers? Yeah. It's good to get back into the swing of things. You know, the summer is really hectic. You know, there's not much consistency to every week. You know, it's a little different depending on who's wrestling where. Um, but you know, after after we got back, I got back from Rio Sunday. Or actually, got back Monday, and school started Monday. So we've been in the routine uh, preseason. You know, we've done we've done a lot of strength and conditioning. We've been on the mat a couple times a week, and it's great to be back with our guys. You know, we're excited about you know the guys we have in the room, and also the guys we're bringing in. That's obviously really difficult for you guys. You're putting a lot of energy into one guy, into Jordan. Yep. You know. And then, you know, he falls short, he doesn't have the best Olympics. Um, do you, are you pretty confident he's going to be back to where, to old form? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, he's, um, you know, we, we learned some stuff. I think, J, I know JB learned you know, from this. You know, he, he, you, know you never lose, right? You, you, you got to either win or you got to learn from it a little bit. Um, and you know, I think JB is, is still young. He's still, he's still hungry. He's still passionate for the sport. And, um, I think next time you see him, you'll see a JB that has a chip on his shoulder. So in, in that now, I mean, we're focusing on, you guys have a returning national finalist, yep. a couple round of 12 guys, other All-Americans. I like the team you guys are returning. Yeah. Um, and some really good freshmen. That really you, good that are, freshmen. I mean, the, the class you brought in is amazing. Yep. Do you think that that is a testament to how important recruiting is? Yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. You know, getting the right guys in the program, um, not just their ability to wrestle, but, uh, you know, having them fit within our culture. You know, we run a really blue collar program. You know, Manning has a really high standard for hard work day in and day out, and finding guys that can handle that, uh, but also have the ability to score points in NCAAs, you know, and handle their, their business in the classroom, in the community, and so we've got that now, and we're excited. And our freshman class is better than we expected. And it was highly touted coming in, but we're really pleased with their level of their level of output, their level of work, and uh, yeah, they're you know most of them are going to redshirt, and you know we'll see those guys in a year or two. In looking at you know you, you say that some of the guys are even better than you thought. Yes. How yeah. awesome is that when you bring a guy on campus? You're like, man, I knew he was really good. I just didn't know he was this good. What's that like for you? It's got to give some confirmation as to hey, I'm doing my job. Yeah. But what's that like? You know, what what do you guys talk about as a coaching staff when you see that happen? Just happy, you know. Obviously, there's a lot of work to be done, but we feel really good um, about where these guys are. I mean, like I said, a lot of them are better than we expected, um, and I think in their their capacity to work, to handle the school, um, the balance of academics. You know, we you know are at, at Nebraska, you know, we have a demand for you know academics, um, athletics, and community service. So to see how our guys are handling all that in stride is is awesome, um, and. You no, know, their output in the room and on the track and in the weight room has been has been great. I think it speaks a lot to the existing culture that we have in our room. That's you know shown every day by our upperclassmen. You know they they have the standard. They've they've internalized the standard, so to speak. And they know what it's like to work. And I think the young guys just came in and said, "There's no other way to do it but to put the work in." Um, and I think that's what we've been most impressed with with our freshmen is just their. Um, their ability to fall in line so quickly and their, their capacity to work. The RTC that you guys have built, the Regional Training Center uh, in Lincoln, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, you only had two medalists uh, in 2015, yeah. Yeah. which is pretty good. Yeah. You know, um, I look at that and, and that structure, that infrastructure there for the postgraduate experience, 
how do you sell that to you know a kid that's coming in uh, a Bo Bresky type guy yeah. you know a guy come like like that coming in how do you sell that to him I think it sells itself I mean if you want to come in and you want to compete for national titles and you want to compete to win world and Olympic medals I think it speaks for itself you know to be in the room with Jordan and James um, you know and, and Austin Trotman we have there I think. You know, they see it. They can see themselves in there. You know, they can see themselves doing the work, and they have the mentorship and the role models to do it. And so, um, you know, they help our guys, and you know, it turns out that our guys help them a lot too. But I think, in, in general, you know, we don't have to sell it. They see it. You know, and I think that's the easiest sell is when they can see it happen. Nebraska, um, you guys haven't won a Big Ten title. I mean, Ohio State. I mean, if you just look at the Big Ten, obviously, Iowa, yep. Penn State, everybody knows is the best team five out of the last six years. Yep. Um, what do you guys got to do to start nipping heels and bring a trophy back to Lincoln? Well, we got to continue to get the recruits we got the last couple of years and continue to put in the work. Um, I think that, you know, we're, we're definitely confident in our ability to develop guys and get them better. Um, but to, to continuously get top-notch recruiting classes, and especially the right type of guys in the program that are going to stick, you know, it makes no sense if you, it makes no, you know, it doesn't matter if you sign a number two recruiting class and, you know, four of them are gone, you know, three, three years later. So getting the guys to stick, um, it's important. And we feel really good about the guys we have in the program. Coming to something like the C3, what are you guys looking for in a recruit? What, what, what is, you know, what, what's Cornhusker mentality and what, what guy, I, I get blue collar. Yeah, what definitely. are you looking for here? You know, these guys have been through the ringer this weekend, so this is, you know, probably their their seventh or eighth workout of the weekend. And, you know, they ran, they did uh, time mile today, they did live wrestling, even before I came here to show techniques. So seeing the guys that are still focused, still passionate about improving their craft, um, obviously good listeners, and being coachable goes so far at the next level. Um, obviously we know what these guys are like on the mat i mean in, i mean competitively we know their accolades and what they've done but it's good to see them how engaged they are in the session um you know and their again their ability to work because we are a blue collar program will you sit and watch the next session or you got to travel home i got to travel home we got a birthday party friend birthday party tonight so kind of a busy weekend 50th anniversary party last night and then a friend tonight but i was able to come up and Spend a couple hours. So just eight or nine hours in the car. Nine hours two, in the uh, car. Three about hours. Three here. hours of technique. Yeah. Yeah. It's a full day. And, a, and a birthday party. And a birthday party. All right. You yeah. got anything else for me? Go Huskers.